In this example, we would like to try to find the fifth degree Taylor polynomial, t5 of x, for the function cinch of 2x. So there are a couple ways to do this. Okay, so we know that by definition, the fifth degree Taylor polynomial is the sum, n goes from 0 up to 5, of the nth derivatives evaluated at 0. So we're going to do the fifth Taylor polynomial at uh, centered at the origin, so centered around 0 n factorial x to the n, right? So we could write out all these terms, and then we could compute the six values, so there's the function itself, and then the five derivatives, and plug them in, and we would have our, our polynomial. Now, there's another way to do this, because we know that cinch of, of u, right? So let, let's write this, I was gonna write it here, but let me make some more room over here. So we know that cinch of u is, by definition, equal to uh, e to the u minus e to the minus u. Okay, and so that means that cinch of 2u is just equal to, just sorry, cinch of 2x is just equal to the same function substituting in 2x where the u's are. All right, but why, why do I like this? Well, we know the power series for e to the u. We know the Maclaurin series for e to the u. I'm sure you remember that e to the u has Maclaurin series equal to the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity, of 1 over n factorial u to the n, okay? And, of course, this means that if you swap out the u for a minus u, then you end up with uh, e to the minus u. The Maclaurin series for e to the minus u is the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity, pretty much the same, except when you plug in a minus u here to the u to the n, you end up with a term minus 1 to the n. So this is an alternating series. And then what we want to do is subtract these, right? And so what's going to happen if we try to subtract these? Well, it's going to, when n is even, it's actually going to subtract the terms, right? So e to the u minus e to the minus u. This is the sum, n goes from 1 to infinity. We can combine these two. These are both absolutely convergent on the entire real number line and beyond, actually. So let, let's look at the stuff that's the same here we see that the 1 over n factorial is in common, the u to the n is in common, right? And so what we're actually subtracting is then 1 minus negative 1 to the n, uh, just like this, right? And so there is a power series for e to the u minus e to the minus u. Now, what's going to happen when, just look at this term, right? When n is even, so if n is even, then this equals 0, because it's going to be 1 minus 1. 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, whenever n is even. When n is odd, what happens? When n is odd, this equals 2, right? Adds up to 2, because it's 1 plus 1, 1 minus a negative 1, so that adds up to 2. And so we see that when n is even, those terms do not contribute to the Maclaurin series. When n is odd, not only do they contribute, but they get doubled, and up here, we have a half, right? So that's going to take care of this half right here. This 2 and the 1 half are going to cancel. And what we end up with is that the cinch function, so cinch of u, is equal to, so this is the entire Maclaurin series, by the way. I know I've gotten a little bit off track. We're only interested, we're only asked about the fifth degree Taylor polynomial. But this ends up being the sum of all the odd terms, right? Just the odd terms, and they're all added up. There's no, this negative 1 to the n has been removed through our analysis here. And so we end up with just the odd terms, and the 1 half cancels out the 2. So we're left with exactly this. 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial, that's the odd terms, u to the 2n plus 1. All right? And if we want, which we do, 2x in here instead of just u, then it goes here, right? It just goes right here. And so we end up with this formula then. So the entire... Maclaurin series for cinch of 2x, hyperbolic sine of 2x is the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity, of 2 to the power 2n plus 1, all right, that comes from plugging 2x in here for u, over 2n plus 1 factorial times u, we've swapped out, so times x to the power 2n plus 1. And if we just write out the first few terms, and when I say few, I mean we need to get to a fifth power here, right? So we need to get up to n equals 2 to make this a fifth power. And then we'll do a dot, dot, dot. But we'll be able to uh, extract our fifth degree Taylor polynomial from this series. So when n is 0, we have 2 to, so 2 to the 1, right? 2 
over 1 factorial times x. So this is just 2x. The next term is going to be 2 to the third power over 3 factorial times x cubed. And then the next term is when n is equal to 2, right? When n is equal to 2, we get our fifth degree polynomial. So 2 to the 5 over 5 factorial x to the fifth plus dot dot dot. And this polynomial right here, these first three terms, this is our polynomial t sub 5 of x. All right, so that's our fifth degree Taylor approximation of the cinch function. You can work out these if you want. So 2 to the third is 8, 2 to the fifth is 32, 5 factorial is 120. So you, there's some things that can cancel here, but let's just write this out as our fifth degree polynomial for cinch of x, right, is 2 times x plus 8 over 6. I'm just going to leave these unreduced here, times x cubed plus, and then this is going to be 32 over 120 x to the fifth. All right, so there's our fifth degree Taylor polynomial for cinch of x. All right, the other part of this question is kind of the more important question, and that is what is the error introduced by this function on the interval from negative one to one, all right? So what is the maximum error? What is the maximum error of this t sub five of x when we use it to approximate cinch of two x, right? on the interval from negative one to one. So this is the question. And for this, we can use Taylor's remainder theorem because this sometimes, by the way, when you write this all out, you look and you notice that sometimes this is an alternating series. Uh, but in this case, it won't be, right? The powers are only odd. Even if you plug in negative one, that's just gonna spit out the minus. It's not gonna be an alternating series. So we can't use any kind of uh, alternating series test to bound this. But what we can use is Taylor's remainder theorem and what our book calls Taylor's inequality, right? Taylor's inequality. And this says that the remainder of the fifth term is bounded by, absolute value, bounded by the maximum of the sixth derivative. So we'll, we'll have to work this out, but that's, um, I'm gonna call m on our interval, divided by six factorial times uh, our value, right? So x, the absolute value here of x minus, zero to the sixth power. And this is this is true for all, so this is true on our interval from negative one to one. And so basically this term right here, we're gonna be able to plug in the endpoints, right? Because the maximum that will be is when x is either one or minus one. And what we need to do is bound this right here, this m, all right? And so remember, so let's go back and remember our function is f of x is equal to cinch of two x then we need to take, take some derivatives, right? So f prime of x is equal to two, uh, so this is a chain rule, right? So two times cosh of two x. f double prime is equal to two squared times cinch of two x. f triple prime of x is equal to two cubed times cosh, so cinch and cosh just go back and forth, right? F fourth power, is fourth derivative I should say, is two to the fourth times cinch of two x. Fifth derivative is equal to two to the fifth. You see where this is going, you probably don't need to write all these out. But now we get to the one we really care about and that's the sixth derivative. So even though, by the way, there's no sixth order term in the polynomial, the remainder always applies to just the next term up, right, in, in terms of the derivative here. And so the sixth derivative of our function is equal to two to the sixth, all right, times cinch of two x. And so what we have to do then is bound this derivative. So we need to bound this by um, some, we need to find some m, right? So this, by the way, is a constant, so our f six at one is gonna be the biggest point, right? Cinch of two x is an increasing function at all times. And so what we get then, f, the sixth derivative of our function at one, this is equal to two to the sixth, all right, times cinch of two, right? Which is two to the fifth times e squared minus e to the minus two. All right, and so this is gonna be, we can set this equal to our m. And what we know then is that 
the remainder, so this is the error, the maximum error in our remainder, so the fifth remainder uh, on the interval uh, for negative 1 to 1 is bounded by this number, 2 to the fifth power, e squared minus e to the minus 2 over uh, 6 factorial times 1 to the 6, so that's it right there. Okay. So if you type this into a calculator and you work this out, you'll find that this error is about 0 0.3224 uh, out to four decimal places. That's rounded up. So maybe you should round down if you want this to bound your error. So you can say 3223. Um, and this is about the error. Eh, if it's an error, we should leave it as rounded up actually, right? So this is, this is the maximum error introduced by the fifth Taylor polynomial, fifth Taylor approximation right here, um, of our function, cinch of 2x, on the interval from negative 1 to 1.